Okay, welcome to this semester and this course, Introduction to Robotics. So, I will need to share my screen with you so that uh, you can see what I am displaying on my screen. Yes, so I understand that you can see my screen now and the entire course this semester as other courses will be delivered through this MOGIT portal. You need to log in with hello.iitk.ac.in and with that, with your PC login and password, you can enter, okay? And I'm sure the way I have got the selection of courses here, <coughs> uh, you will have uh, your own selection of courses. Okay. So here in this portal, you will do access courses. So after I upload this lecture, then uh, you will find lecture here. And if there is any task associated with it, then you will find that also here. Okay. Now, uh, any doubts that you have, you can <coughs> post in a forum. Right? I have created a forum. Of course, some of you have started a Hangout session also. Okay. So here I have this note on lectures textbook matter or confusions on the subject matter of robotics one can raise issues here and comment counter result and in what manner we will handle this by so many people interacting together that i'll soon um, outline to you okay and uh, this hangout also is there which some of you started in which finally I also made a uh, note. Okay. So here one document I have already posted and that is in resources. So whatever other than lecture assignment material, so that separately we can post in this resources. Okay. So not only handout, anything else. If I am going to um, make available to you some extra outside reading material, I can put it there. Okay. So right now, the first thing that we need to discuss here is the course plan, the outline of the course, how are we going to handle it, and uh, the discipline issues. Okay. So let us do that first, and then we go to subject matter. And I know that. Uh, uh, this could have been done two days earlier and for two days some of you have been hunting for the information update about this course now there are two things which uh, played into the delay uh, one was uh, that seeing that uh, weekly discussion hour is on Wednesday scheduled for this course I felt that there is no big point in starting to give lectures from Tuesday itself. And in that case, uh, uh, from Tuesday to next uh, Wednesday, it would be too much of, uh, you know, collection of material, which is uh, not nice for you to have a uniform load. Okay. So I actually designed to start uploading lecture, lectures and other things from today. But of course, I intended to do it since morning, not in the evening. Anyway, that's not a problem. Before that Wednesday, coming Wednesday, you will find enough of one-week material. Your hands will be full. Okay. So, actually, uh, this readiness to start today was one thing. And the other thing was that in the other course, uh, starting turned out to be so intensive because of the subject matter, because of the necessity of discussion with the partner, and also because of uh, 
this portal. Okay, so I had to get in terms with this portal for a while. Now I think I'm more or less settled. So we discuss the course plan. Either we discuss it from here or we can discuss it from here. Okay, we can discuss it from here. I can increase the font size so that while I speak, while you will listen to me, you can also read it. Okay, so this is the course. We are two instructors, myself and Professor Dutta. And this semester, most of the department courses have been entrusted to two colleagues. So that, for example, after giving three, four lectures, if the virus catches me, then Professor Dutta can take care of it. Okay. So, uh, I have some TAs, Sushant, Sunil, and Akib. They will be interacting with you now and then for several things. Now, to begin with, I should point out to you the textbooks which we use in this course. Uh, this uh, book by John J. Craig, uh, this is the most important book and it would be best if you have it. And I am sure the e-versions of this book are available. Okay. However, Craig does not have one or two things. And for that, you need to depend on something more. And uh, different uh, teachers um, use different books for that matter. And I and Professor Dutta have reached a consensus to keep uh, these books in the plan. So after it all, um, because sensor is one topic which Craig does not have. And Craig Clafter et al. has a lot of sensors. And Clafter et al. is also good for applications point of view. Craig is more rich in theory. Okay. And Craig does not have uh, two more topics which are important for this course, introduction to robotics. One is vision and the other is motion learning. Now, for that, I typically uh, use chilling okay, from the fundamentals of robotics. This is for vision and motion learning chapters. Other chapters of chilling also are not bad, but uh, somehow chilling's uh, uh, style of writing doesn't uh, match very well with my temperament. So, with these two topics, for these two topics, I have made a sort of uh, deal with chilling, some agreement kind of thing. But for other things, Craig is perfect for the temperament of anybody. Okay. Ghoshal's book on robotics is another good book which covers a lot of topics. Uh, but uh, that, that itself, uh, I have never used as the sole basic textbook. So as first textbook, Craig stands out. Okay. And others are supporting this. Okay. So this semester, unlike other semesters, we don't talk about uh, three days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, lecture hours or whatever, because we are doing lectures pre-recorded online. Now, in order to have some standard class interaction, um, academic section has so kindly scheduled a discussion hour and for this course it falls on Wednesday 12 to 12 15. For that I will schedule a Zoom meeting and send you the link to that. Okay. And during this hour try your best to be in the online class. Okay. And now if both of us stay hale and hearty, myself and Professor Tatra, then which topics I will cover and which topics we will cover. And I have uh, worked out the deal to have the first half uh, with a lot of advantages. That is, uh, I finish early and 
get a lot of worry out of my head and uh, be free for the invading virus for that matter and uh, also this part of the course is so fundamental that i believe that if 15 years after doing this course some of you remember some topics of this course then that topic has a very high likelihood of falling here rather than here okay so this is why i feel that my main contribution in teaching will be to the fundamental topics which are likely to be the subject matter of which is likely to be remembered and useful for students longer okay so that is my again temperamental issue so first topic introduction and overview i will cover in uh, at most to this kind of online lectures okay and then fundamentals of robot kinematics this is extremely important and extremely interesting topic so you should go through these things very carefully in the textbook and of course in the lectures also and participate in discussions in a big way After that, we talk about position kinematics, direct and inverse. Direct position kinematics is that if the inputs regarding positions are given, then what are the outputs? Inverse will be the reverse of that. Okay. Next, we discuss velocity kinematics. And immediately after velocity kinematics, we discuss the transformations of Static force. Okay. There should be a correction here. There is a spelling mistake. There is a C missing. I'll put it. So static static force transformation. Okay. Here also another typo. S capital I. It should be small i. Okay. So I'll handle this. Oh, another. I made so many spelling mistakes here. Maybe the view was not proper in writing this. Okay. If some of you notice some more spelling mistakes like this. Please point out in the forum. I'll correct them. Okay. So these are the maximum number of lectures which I am projecting, and my half of the course I will try to finish in 16 online lectures. And during this time and at the end of this time, whatever I give you as part of assessment, together that will form 100 marks of credit. Something similar, Professor Dutta will do in the second half. How he distributes, that is up to him. Okay. So, plan to be covered by Professor Dutta. These topics, actuators and sensors, control, design, programming, vision, and applications. Okay. Now, here, when I say trajectory planning, actually planning, the two terms look very close. One is trajectory planning and the other is motion planning, robot motion planning. In the trajectory planning, you will see soon within the first half of the course, what are the issues involved? Issues involved is just to make a nominal plan of giving the robot motion from one starting point to another end point. Okay? And that is basically concentrates on continuity of motion and uh, appropriate parameters of the boundary conditions or other motion parameters to be met and a very personally lip service to the uh, necessity of avoiding to hit something on the way that is is left at only lip service at the trajectory planning level. I think most of the uh, workspace uh, volume is free. Okay. And nothing is really going to obstruct motion. There are situations when there is nothing to obstruct motion and such plans can work and trajectory planning caters to that. And it does the one important thing of Parameterizing the motion 
as function of time. So at what time? This is basically a planning of a time schedule of the robot motion. Another important thing, which is very interesting and deep kind of topic, which is motion planning, robot motion planning. The focus of which is obstacle avoidance. That is, if there are, are clutters in the workspace, so that a straightforward motion plan will almost certainly hit something on the way, then how to avoid those and still find a path? So that is actually path planning. And that has no business with time. So after a path is planned, that needs to be given a smooth time parameterization through the trajectory planning anyway. So trajectory planning is a simple thing. Straightforward established numerical analysis techniques. And uh, it parameterizes the motion with respect to time. And this is essential for every robotic task. And for those robotic tasks which are complicated, which have the danger of obstacles, for that, the motion planning, robot motion planning, or path planning is necessary. And that requires deep kind of intelligence. So that part, um, I also could cover. Actually, I had the original intention of doing that. But Professor Dutta made a very good point, And he suggested that that can be covered. That little bit can be covered better in the context of programming or applications, which comes later. So he will handle it in his turn. Now, make note that on all these topics, whether it is kinematics, singularity and workspace issues, control, or robot motion planning, in all these topics, this course handles tertiary starting points. Okay? So that way, introduction to robotics is actually an introduction. So it tries to cover breadth and not breadth. So in all of these topics, there are enormous depths and advanced topics which we don't cover in this. Through this course, we try to give the audience, give the students, a broad overview of robotics. And you see, dynamics is not covered at all. Robot dynamics is not covered at all in this course. Okay. And therefore, in control, those control methods which use the dynamics cannot be confused. Okay, so there are such things. So those for those we have advanced courses. Okay. IIT Kanpur has had the history of offering a lot of uh, courses in robotics for decades, and uh, that is how a lot of courses, some introductory, some advanced, advanced, some specializing on this topic, some specializing on that topic, and so on. Started. Now, regarding course logistics, I have already told you that this course will be delivered to the MOOCIT platform. Yes. And further points of protocol in my half of the course, the first half of the course, will be this. Of course, Professor Dutta may somewhat tailor the thing according to his plan that he will do after the mid -term. So, first thing I have already pointed out to you that doubt clearance and discussion forum has been initiated in the MOOCIT portal itself. And therefore, therefore, you will typically not need to send me separate emails on your conclusions or doubts as long as the portal works. Okay. And on any topic opened by a student, if a student, say, post secretary in the forum, then first two hours, uh, I'll not make any comment on it. I'll not try to resolve the query extremely soon. Okay. So first two hours will be exclusively for other students of the course to clarify, comment, or counter that query. Okay. Or issue. Instructors and TAs will be silent. In the next two hours, uh, it will be uh, for TAs primarily. The students also can continue posting their remarks, their comments, their 
answers to that. So these two hours will be open for TAs and students. I will still stay alone. Okay. So this way, I'm trying to give more Philip to peer-to-peer -peer learning so that many of your queries get resolved by your colleagues and then your immediate seniors. And similarly, you will be clearing the doubts of some of your colleagues, some of your friends. Okay. And finally, after these two plus two, four hours, I will enter into the picture if I need to. It may be that most of the time I will not need to enter into the picture till I might end up rubber stamping it. But yes, this fellow told the final correct answer of that question. That is how it is. Okay. So if the doubt persists, if there are confusing fronts left open by all students and peers, then I will try to give a statement of that. There may be one or two issues here and there which are a little tricky, which are a little um, out of the way where I might have to enter like that. Okay. So expectation is that most doubts will be resolved at low levels. Fine. In rare cases, my judgment, my mediation might be needed. Over and above this forum, this discussion forum, in which most of the issues we will have tried to resolve. In fact, in this forum, not only you can write text, apparently you can put audio, you can perhaps put images also, I have not tried. Okay, so you can try all those things. Just text, even in Hangout, you have already seen that um, you can see. Those who have not seen will see sooner or later. So over and above all these things, for conversation based about clearances, uh, there is the Wednesday class. Okay. Every Wednesday during 12 to 12.50, for which I will send you the Zoom link either in mail or here itself. Okay. Here it actually is a better idea, but just in case people are not very uh, quick in taking this all the time. I think you will be quick enough. Okay. Fine. Now, close to the end of almost every hour of discussion, in my half at least, I will post a problem. That is something like what I would otherwise give you as a classwork. Okay. And in the typical classwork, I typically expect you to submit it in 10 to 15 minutes. Here, that will be sort of uh, nonsensical. Okay. So, I will give you one hour. And to submit that solution in one hour, in the hello.itk portal itself, you will be able to submit. Okay. The grading scheme for the first half of 100 marks, it will be one mid -sem exam, two hours of 40 marks, and a discussion hour. And on the discussion hour problems, total I will count to be 60. I was supposed to write this 60 here. Here I was supposed to write something else. I, I will make this correction. This, it's not that discussion hour problems will not be 60. It will be at most six, okay, or five perhaps, or seven. Okay, and together I will make it out of 60. Okay, so this will be the plan. And uh, with this, I think the um, course protocol and discipline part of it is over. And I will take a little break from here. And after that, I will try to give you an overview of the field of robotics itself. I'm stopping to share right now, and after a while, I'll be back on this. Okay. okay, so I'm back after my little pause, so it was a very small pause for you. I'll share my screen again.
10 percent. Okay, so this part of today's duty I have uh, finished, and now the second part. Now, uh, most of the slides of this talk was actually uh, developed long time back, more than two decades back. In fact, more than two and a half decades back, I think. It was developed sometime in 94, 95, or 93 maybe. And that was when I was a student. And at that time, in my student days in IIC Bangalore, there used to be a society called Looking Around, a society for interdisciplinary interaction. And Looking Around was once organizing in a, a series of uh, popular talks among students, given by students, on uh, interesting topics of science and technology. Uh, I remember that there were some seven lectures, seven such talks on recent trends in this subject or that subject or whatever. So one of the organizers of Looking Around um, was an admirer of mine and he asked me to give a talk on recent trends in robotics. So I framed my talk on these recent trends in robotics and along with that, I made available a little article, Recent Trends in Robotics. So at that time, the title of this talk was Recent Trends in Robotics. Now, quite a few trends which I named as recent at that time are actually not so recent anymore. Okay, because in between more than two decades have passed. Uh, still, a lot of it is useful as a general overview of the subject matter and some of those even though is no more recent but more and more advances in those are taking place and so the idea of recency have not really gone out of that so some of the sites you will find bunched together under recent trends that is partly because at that time it was very recent and at the time of revising this document article as well as slides in 2008 at that time also it was not too old and even now the last word has not been said in many of, of them okay. so now the uh, talk covers three points in this one is the background of robotics, and then the recent trends, and there is a conclusion of what would be an ideal robotic system, a dream. In fact, the entire field started with the dream itself, for that matter. So, the conception of a robot goes way back to one century. I did not remember it just now I noticed it is going to be one century very soon okay so the word robot came into the lexicon of humankind in 1921 in which a Czech playwright Karel Chapek wrote a uh, drama called Osam's Universal Robot in that, Rosam was a manufacturing company which started these machines called universal robots <coughs> to do manual tasks. That thing happened towards the end of this particular play and uh, uh, the robots uh, start capturing uh, human settlements and so on. And 
with a lot of difficulty control was established okay so this 1921 actually coined the word robot okay. the original word robot with tech roots obviously has a notion of manual labor in some slavic languages it also has the sense of uh, serf or slaves to do manual labor and after this this disastrous monstrous idea of robots actually was very true in some science fiction movies also okay however you should know that the original fictional document of this kind was actually Frankenstein's monster written by Mary Shelley, the mm -hmm. wife of poet Percy B. Shelley. Okay. Frankenstein's monster has become very famous in English knowing circles and even non English knowing circles for that matter through translation. That's a classic in world literature. Now, all these destructive monstrous picture of robots was not like by the famous science fiction writer Isaac Asimov and he tried to picture robots as innocent machines which have intelligence some sort of intelligence not human intelligence full sense in the full sense to begin with and which operates according to some laws it's not so lawless like it will do anything and it will capture uh, human settlements and uh, start running them up and killing human beings and so on. No, nothing of that sort. It operates according to laws, according to some rules, and mostly they are innocent, they're they are actually lovable. Okay, so you can see the connection with dogs. Okay, so most of us are afraid of dogs, and uh, seeing a dog coming towards one, most of us start running. But you see. Those who love dogs, they will never operate like that. They will feel that dogs are innocent, loving, and lovable creatures. Okay, they're so cute. And whatever you train them, they will do that. And they're so loyal. They're famous for their loyalty. Man's best friend. So, robots were pictured by Isaac, Isaac Asimov in the form of innocent, interesting, intelligent machines. But they're machines. They are going to work for the purpose for which they are designed and according to the programming that has gone into it. Now, Isaac Asimov, through his robot stories, actually goes on developing situations and themes in which he shows how some robots do interesting things, how some robots do really in a, Good work and nice great service to humanity and also situations where robots actually end up running them off and Isaac Asimov nicely works out how that was because of a faulty mistake and halfway through programming which is that if you make a mistake in the programming obviously the machine will run in a wrong manner and that is not the machine's problem, that is your fault. You should and you should have a way to organize the robot so that you can correct the programming. Okay. And first time, actually, Isaac Asimov wrote robot stories for decades, and after releasing quite a few stories, in one particular story, he enunciated his idea of the laws according to robots work and this is not only fiction this is very important i'll tell you why they are so important just listen to the three laws of robotics and the way for us for the table chair and uh, books balls the law of nature works as a casino pictured as if robots work according to its laws which are coded at the core of its memory, at the core of its consciousness, intelligence. If those laws go haywire, then 
robot cannot function anymore. Okay. So in a story in 1942, Isaac Asimov actually in built a context in which he gave forward the three laws of robotics. This was a story called the runaround. So in that a very funny situation took place that the robot was running around a dangerous spot and it was very difficult to get him away from there and human beings could not go so close to the dangerous spot because of higher danger to the human beings okay and there one junior roboticist and one senior roboticist discuss the issue the senior roboticist clarifies to the junior roboticist what is going wrong with this robot and why. In that context, the senior roboticist explains to the junior roboticist once more fundamental three robotics laws. And through this, the word robotics came into picture first time in human history. Two decades, the word robot was there as the agency which does such manual labor, the machine which does the robot, does the work, manual work, sometimes intelligent work also for that matter, but there was nothing called robotics. So this fictional story, Isaac Asimov ended up coining the word robotics as a science and technology of robots. Those three laws are a robot may not harm a human being or through its inaction let a human come to harm. The second law was a robot shall fulfill the orders given to it as long as it does not come in conflict with the first law. The third law says a robot shall try to protect its own existence as long as it does not conflict with the first or second law. So the three laws are put in sequence and the priorities are established to the three laws. And lots and lots of robot behaviors in fictional circumstances Asimov tried to show as originating from these three laws fundamentally. And since all the three laws have their intensities a little over a continuous spectrum, so a strong second law and a strong, um, uh, you know, circumstance calling for the second law turns out to be sometimes very close to in conflict with a weak first law it depends upon the coding okay or a weak circumstances calling for the first law similarly between second and third first things might happen and it is the programming skill programming exactitude which should handle that okay. so this is one big watershed event in the field of robotics and after that, science fiction and cinema plays these things, took the idea of robots and robotics forward for quite some time. As a result of it, a natural terminology of robots developed, which talks about arms, legs, fingers, arm, hand, elbow, knee, and so on. Okay. And another advantage was that the performance benchmark was obvious. Whenever you think of how to get a robot to do this, these robots are originally pictured as replacements of human beings, a mechanical equivalent of replacement of human beings. So if you try to get some ideas regarding your design about how 
should I make my robot do this particular task? You always have a benchmark to think of. Basically, a way to do it, a logistic step is why don't you do it like this? We human beings try to do it like this. Why not we try to make the robot do like that as long as technologically possible? And at the same time, we had a benchmark of how good in principle it could go as smartly as a human being does. And that's actually a very, very tall order. Because most of the things, human beings, most of the things requiring actual intelligence, human beings do in a very, very smart manner. But we have got an ideal to look forward to. Okay. So these two came as positive fallout of this background of robots in science fiction and cinema. Also, as a negative fallout, you got the Frankenstein myth, in which people were a little afraid of robots, as robots can go amok. That way, any machine can go amok. Cars and bicycles go amok almost every day on Indian streets, and bigger vehicles for that matter. Now, through a few iterations and actual technological developments, slowly, the definition of a robot emerged, which is always quite a loose definition. Okay. And that is, that talks about a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator. Manipulator stresses the physical work dimension of it. And it can manipulate things in the world and it can do several different functions and uh, functional differences will arise out of different programming. So reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator. The typical definition says a robot is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator designed to then it's a list of works that is designed to do this. this, this. So you see that in the textbook in detail. So this is the Frankenstein myth. The robot is a very huge and very powerful metallic object. It doesn't have to be all that. Okay. However, one point I should mention, though most of the robots do not look like this, a large number of industrial robots morphologically, structurally resemble a human arm. So if you put the base of the robot somewhere here and you have the arrangement of achieving 30 degree of freedom motion through an arm-like structure, differing in detail in many places from shoulder to fingertip, then you get a rough picture of most of the industrial robots. And that is called the anthropomorphic design. Of robots anthropomorphic that is formed as human element that is human arm in this case so that is not necessarily the only way you can design and structure a robot's body there are other ways okay so from this point i will take up in the Thank you for the time being.